Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the class. We are doing the chapter understanding marginalization, and under this chapter, we have done uh, with the tribal community. And uh, today, we will start with the minority community uh, that is uh, mainly the minority community which face marginalization in our country is the Muslim community. So, we will start with minorities and uh, minorities and marginalization so uh, first of all you all are acquainted with the term minorities what do we mean by minorities minorities any group which is lesser in number is minority and Two types of groups are there in any society. Uh, one is majority group and another is minority group. So minority is lesser in number, majority is uh, greater in number. Okay. Now, this minority group can be there on two bases. The first is religion. And the second is on the basis of language on other basis also on the basis of gender also there can be a majority and minority group on the basis of culture also there can be minority and majority groups but here we are concerned with the minority groups on the basis of religion and language okay so what do you mean by uh, my religious minority uh, there is minority on the basis of religion like uh, when uh, people belonging to a particular uh, religion are lesser in number com uh, in comparison with uh, the number of the people who belong to other religion you know? so then it is called religious uh, minority okay religious jo uh, uh, community this a country ke andar uh, there are uh, people in a country and these people uh, they believe in different religion so it happens that a uh, number of uh, people who who uh, who follow a particular religion is lesser than the number of people who follow different religion so the number of people who follow a particular religion if their number is lesser than it will be called religious minority group so uh, like uh, in our country the muslims are religious minority because uh, the the people who follow islam religion are lesser in number than uh, the other religion okay uh, other religion like the hinduism the people who follow hinduism are more in number so uh, what we find that uh, when you read uh, constitution and you know, your first chapter was constitution and you have read about uh, the functions of the constitution and in that you have seen that uh, one of the most important function of the constitution is uh, what is uh, is uh, to maintain uh, harmony between uh, different groups who are living in a country then uh, uh, to safeguard the interest of the minorities this is one of the most important function of the constitution Safeguard the interest of the minorities. So here now the question arises that uh, why do we need to why do we need to uh, safeguard the interest of the minorities? In any society, if there is diversity, there will be the problem of majority and minority. And when there will be majority group and minority group in a society, then there will be 
there will be such a, um, atmosphere in the country in which uh, the 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 majority group will become dominant uh, and uh, the majority group will try to to force the minority group to follow their tradition to follow their uh, religion their culture and all it is highly uh, it is highly um, possible that uh, this kind of situation may be may prevail in any country ki majority group jo hai wo minority group par pressure dalti hai ki wo apne tarike se na apni cheezon ko na kare balki hame follow kare kyunki hum majority mein hai so there is need to safeguard the interest of the minorities there is need to safeguard the culture and religion of the minorities and this function is done by the constitution and for that purpose only our constitution gives fundamental rights to the people isn't it we have fundamental rights and uh, uh, these uh, one of the most important fundamental right is about the minorities and if anyone if anyone violates this fundamental right we can uh, go directly to the uh, supreme court hai na so this is uh, what uh, constitution does this is about the minorities and now we come to the, our uh, religious minority group in our country that is uh, the muslim community so Our next topic is Muslims and marginalization. So now. what we find that um, this uh, the the muslims they form the 14.2% of india's population according to the census of 2011 okay so they constitute 14.2% of population and um, that is why they are minority because their percentage is low okay and uh, this community is considered to be a marginalized community why is it considered to be a marginalized community because what we find that in our country development took place take place hai na development ho raha hai development is taking place after independence we have developed in uh, social aspect in economic aspect in all aspect we are developing but what we find that the benefit of this development is not reaching to the this uh, religious minority community and that is why we are calling it a marginalized group because if it was if it was in uh, uh, in the mainstream then it must get benefit from the economic and social development of the country but it is marginalized and that is the uh, that is uh, how how can we say that uh, the muslim community is marginalized because uh, they are uh, now these socio economic uh, um, indicators indicators of socio economic development shows that the community has not developed because and that is why it is marginalized we have some data like the first data is about access to basic amenities okay so what we find that uh, the muslim community has a very uh, less access to uh, basic amenities basic amenities uh, the things which are very much basic in our life like water shelter 
uh, electricity these all come under basic amenities amenities kya hoga facilities suvidhaye jo hame chahiye in order to live a respectable life we need water we need house we need electricity hai na so these are uh, basic amenities so house electricity and uh, one more that is tap water okay so what we see we have this data of 2008 9 in which we see that uh, the the hindus it is a uh, this uh, data is uh, uh on the basis of religion like we see that hindus hindus have 65.4% hindus lives in pakka house house ka matlab pakka house you have read in evs na in, in your uh, uh earlier classes two types of houses are there pakka house and kachcha house so pak pakka house uh, so we see that 65.4% hindus live in a pakka house and if we see in case of uh, muslims 63.8% muslims live in pakka house and uh, likewise uh, in other aspects also we find that uh, like electricity 75.2% hindu hindu families are having this uh, electricity they they have the electricity connection and in case of muslim it's only 67.5% the tap water uh, in case of tap water also we find that 43.7% hindus are getting tap water in their house but only 35.8% muslims are getting tap water in their house so this is the difference in the uh, availability of uh, basic amenities to uh, muslim community and other communities so when you come when you compare you will find that the the muslims are the com muslim community uh, is uh, in the in the in the most uh, in the worst condition in case of pakka house in case of electricity in case of tap water okay and now we will uh, see the next table which is given in your book the next data which is given in your book it's about literacy rate okay so literacy rate is also given according to religion it's uh, from the census of its uh, literacy rate so in case of literacy rate also you will see that in india the literacy percentage of literate people is 74% as a whole if we consider only hindus 63% hindus are literate if we consider only muslims 57% muslims are literate christians mein agar hum dekhe to 74% christians are literate sikhs mein ye 67% hai buddhists buddhists mein 71% jains mein 86% so you can just see that the lowest literacy rate is in the muslim community so this also indicate their bad uh, social and educational status okay and now we see the next table the next table deals with the uh, public employment of uh, the muslims hai na so if we see the data what we find that in this regard also in this context also the condition of muslims is very bad like uh, if 
in 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 whole country if that if is officers uh if if 100 is officers are there in a, in the country in our country then only three of them belong to muslim community so this also indicate their pitiable condition if in a, in the whole country 100 is officers are there only four belong to muslim community if in a whole country um 100 ifs officers are there then only 1.8% belong to muslim community so this also indicate uh, that the muslims are a marginalized community they are not getting benefit from the socio economic development of the country the government development is taking place but its benefit is not reaching uh, to to all the communities equally that's this we can say okay and now we see that uh, uh the condition of uh, in order to examine the socio economic and the educational condition or educational status or condition of the muslims the government appointed a committee uh, under the chairmanship of justice rajinder sachar it's a justice rajinder sachar committee jo chairman hai unke naam pe us committee ka naam pad jata hai mostly aise hi hota hai sachar committee this committee was set up by the government in the year 2005 and what was the purpose of the uh, setting up of this commission the purpose was to examine the social economic and educational status of the muslim community in india now this sachar committee uh, did uh, investigation and all and it uh, gave its report to the government and in its report it said that uh, that muslim uh, uh, community is marginalized community in our country okay and uh, there are so many social economic and educational indicators uh, um, which which uh, which which uh, proves that in our country the condition of muslim is as bad as the condition of the the other margin, marginalized communities like the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes so they are the muslims are not in a good condition are not in a better condition than uh, the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes they are also living the same kind of uh, pit, they are also in the same kind of pitiable condition so uh, we see that uh, uh, it was also said in the report that uh, the average year of schooling for muslim children between the age of 7 and 16 is much lower than that of other socio religious community if we if we compare it with other socio religious community we find that the average year of schooling for muslim children between the age group of 7 to 16 is very low so this also indicate there um their their uh, lower social condition lower economic condition and lower uh, um, educational condition okay so we find that uh, the, uh, the 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 this community faces marginalization now this marginalization marginalization has many aspect What are the different aspects of marginalization? Aspect का मतलब क्या हुआ उसके जो different forms हैं उसी को हम aspect कह सकते हैं ठीक है different forms जैसे कि uh, economic marginalization, social marginalization, cultural marginalization, these are all different aspects of marginalization. Okay, so economic social cultural cultural 
cultural marginalization these are different aspects of marginalization okay so uh, in our country we see that uh, we will um, see how the muslim community face all these we will continue with this in the next class